So he's like this, cross. Okay. You're gonna come like this, okay. you get behind you, and then dunk. Ooh, I still got it. I wanted it dunk. I, I can't dunk. dunk. <laughs> How's it going, guys? My name is Kevin. Today we are in beautiful downtown LA. We're on a rooftop. We are going to be shooting kind of like a Nike commercial spec ad. I can't wait to get into this because we are going from this to this. Let's ball, baby. Ball is life. Ooh. What do you know about that stroke? So there's a few things we're gonna to try to cover today. One of them, just getting a gritty image. Going for kind of grungy, really just an imperfect image to really fit the aesthetic of downtown LA. There's barbed wire, there's, you know, we're on a city roof. It's, it's kind of grungy here. So we're gonna to try to make it imperfect. And secondly, we're gonna to try to get a contrasty image. We're gonna look for depth in backlighting. So you're gonna see a lot of backlighting, you're gonna see a lot of edges, a lot of specular highlights that's just gonna separate the subject from the city. And lastly, to add to the grittiness of this spec ad, we're gonna shoot on anamorphic lenses. That's gonna give us some wild artifacts, some flaring. It's gonna be really cool. Can't wait to get into it with you. Let's do this. So kind of the concept of this scene is we have someone playing on a basketball court and then we have another person walking onto the court to kind of challenge the guy that's already playing. And we're gonna see how this plays out. So as I said, we're here on a rooftop in LA and the reason why I chose this location in particular was first of all, we're in the middle of a city and that lends itself to the grittiness of the aesthetic. And we have, as you can see, chain link fence, we've got barbed wire and that just all kind of pushes all into one direction of that grit. We also have a lot of city lights in the background and bokeh looks amazing on anamorphic. So we are shooting a nighttime scene. Obviously it's not nighttime yet, but as the sun sets, we're gonna get a head start and get everything set up. We're gonna set up lights, set up cameras, set up the basketball court, get actors ready, all that good stuff. So by the time the sun sets and it's dark, we're ready to shoot and I won't have my guys wrap at two, three, four a.m. I'll get you guys home early, don't worry, okay? We can get a good night's sleep tonight. We're all sleeping tonight. So the camera we're shooting on today is my new red Komodo. I'm so stoked to shoot with this thing. It's one of the newer cameras out in the market. It's gonna be really exciting to see the image out of this thing. And we, why not pair it with some of the best anamorphics in the business? The Atlas Orions. This one is the 40 millimeter. We're gonna be switching between a few, but this combo is gonna be awesome. I cannot wait to see the images out of this thing. In order to spice up what's already a great combo, the red Komodo and the Atlas Anamorphics, I wanted to spice it up even a little bit more with a little bit of filtration in our matte box. Today we're gonna to be shooting on Hollywood Black Magic Quarter Strength. It's gonna get all the highlights to halate a little bit. And what halation does is it gets all the highlights in the image to kind of have a little bit of a glow. It's gonna to add to that grittiness. And I love this compared to Black Magic Pro Mist, which is what a lot of people use. Uh, because the main difference with Hollywood Black Magic versus Black Pro Mist is Hollywood Black Magic actually retains the blacks a little bit more while Black Pro Mist lifts them slightly. So as I mentioned before, we're shooting on anamorphics. Today we have the entire set with us, which consists of a 40 millimeter, a 65, and a 100 millimeter. We're gonna start on the 40 millimeter to get those wider establishing shots, but when we go in for the close-ups, I think I'm gonna use this 100 millimeter. It's a bazooka. Let's go. So my game plan for the backlights is I'm gonna use a few 300D Mark IIs. I'm gonna put them on the far side of the frame so that we're shooting into them. I think I might keep them in frame to get those anamorphic horizontal flares. Um, but what I'm kind of, I'm not worried, but I'm a little worried. What if we see these stands? What if we see the production in frame? So I'm hoping one of two things happen come shoot time. I'm hoping that when it's dark, you won't even be able to see them. And if you can see them a little bit, perhaps they'll fade into all the vertical lines we have in the, in the city. All the buildings have all these vertical lines. Maybe it'll be hidden in there somewhere. If that doesn't work, I think the next plan will be put black gaff tape on it and hide it as best we could. Honestly, some of the best ideas and the best images I've ever taken come from the unplanned. There's no way to plan around it. They're kind of like happy accidents. I'm hoping this is one of them. So you're probably wondering, we got all these lights up here. We're gonna be setting up some 600Ds, some stronger lights. We got Video Village over there. How are we gonna power everything? Well, we've got Jennies. Jennies is short for generator. So these little guys are little Honda Jennies. They're gas powered. You throw some gas in there and they generate power. I got the power. So one thing that I love to introduce in as many productions as I can is camera movement and a variety at that. I'm gonna try everything. I'm gonna try sticks. I'm gonna try handheld. I got an easy rig. I'm gonna do dolly track. We're gonna try it all. We wanna really create a variety of different rich looking images to really help convey the story. Right now we are sitting our camera on top of a doorway dolly and that's on like a 10 to 12 foot track. 
So as the basketball players are driving to the hoop, we're gonna be driving with them. It's gonna be awesome because we're gonna throw a 100 millimeter on there and that in combination with the doorway dolly tracking with them, you're gonna feel like you're driving to the rim with them. Let's go. Can you dunk? Can you dunk? I, I can't, I can't dunk. I, I could, no, I can't even lay up. I'm not that good at, okay. So one of the things I learned from one of my favorite DPs, Patrick O'Sullivan of The Wandering DP, is a wet down. Now a wet down is basically taking water and wetting down the whole floor. What this is gonna do is give us some really pretty reflective qualities from the light from the city and our backlights. It's gonna bounce off this floor and hit the lens and gonna create nice specular highlights on the floor, something we're not used to seeing. It's also gonna create more depth for us, visual interest. It's gonna make the image as a whole look that much better. Rob, you're just gonna walk from this corner while he's balling. No. You're just gonna walk over and simply just like, you're coming to ball, you're coming to challenge him. Oh, yeah. Then you guys are gonna do like a cowboy face off, right? Yeah. Rob's gonna be like this, like he's gonna he'd be like, oh, okay. okay. You're gonna hold it like that and I'm gonna get some camera angles from both of you guys. Rob, you're gonna pass it to him. You're gonna catch it, pause, cross, cross, left, drive on him and then throw it down with your right. So in addition to our 300D Mark II backlights that we have already set up, we wanted to add a little bit more reflection on the floor. So we added another 600D that we had and we just aimed it right at the floor just to get some more highlights and really emphasize the wet down and all the reflections that's hitting the lens. Hey, can we, uh, can we back off that 600D a little further? And then, yep, that's great. And then Rob, when you pass him the ball, you go up to guard him. I'm gonna be going down this way too when they dribble, I'm gonna like, we're gonna be tracking with them. So I auditioned the 100 millimeter lens and it was a little too tight. I wanted a little bit more context because we're gonna be doing close-ups later on. So I really wanted to capture both of the characters in frame. So this, we went down to the 65 millimeter and that's gonna allow me to give a little bit more width to capture both of them in action at the same time. We're still gonna feel like we're in there and we're tracking with them. We're just gonna be able to feel both of them rather than one. All right, settle in, everybody. All right, pictures up, quiet on set. Let's roll. A cam speeding. And action. Dolly. Okay, that looked great guys, let's move on to the next shot. All right guys, so now we're gonna do some handheld shots. And for the handheld, I'm setting up the Easy Rig Vario 5. This one in particular has the stable arm on it, and what that does is it softens some of the vertical axes when I'm walking. Let's do it. Starting at his feet, walking with him to see the floor, and then I'm gonna slowly walk with him and pan up, and it's gonna be pretty much that. So we've got all the lights set up, everything's looking good, we're on our second shot. And there's always that little bit that you can push the extra mile. What I wanna do is light him up as he's walking in with a flickering kind of a green neon city light just to kind of add to that grittiness and play into that grunge and the imperfect grittiness of the city. All right, in three, two, one, action. So we're done with wides and now we're gonna go into the close-ups. And the important thing with getting coverage of the close-ups is maintaining continuity. And that means making sure the key light is on the same side of the face. And this one's a little different because we're rotating the scene so that we can see more of a better background. So we just gotta make sure the light is still hitting the same side of the face that it was when we first established our scene in the wide. So I think we shoot this way. So you stand over here because um, in our wide that we established, the lights, the key lights were, were lighting up their right side of their face. So if T's looking at this way, the light was coming from here. So the second thing I wanna look for in close-up coverage is I don't wanna rely completely on those backlights to be lighting up the face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a 300D Mark II, I'm bouncing it into a floppy ultra bounce, and what that's gonna do is it's going to wrap that edge light so you can see the emotion, but it's also gonna give our characters a catch light. So you're basically seeing every motion on their face, you're feeling what they're feeling, 
and you're getting a nice exposure across their face. So in order to make that light stand not so distracting and look like an actual C stand, uh, we did a couple things. First of all, we took our gaff tape and we blocked the light that was hitting the light stand and reflecting light back into the camera. And we blocked that out with this four x four right here. It still appeared in the frame, but to my eye, it looks like a street lamp post. And I think that passes. I don't think anyone's too distracted by it. I think we're good to go. So for composition, I'm gonna keep one of the actors dirty in the frame. And what that means is I'm gonna use the actor's shoulder as foreground and it's gonna be peeking into frame while I'm focused in the actor in front of him. So the reason I wanna keep them dirty in frame is because at this point of our scene, I want them locked into each other. They're both sharing the same frame. They are, they are head to head and we wanna kind of encapsulate that. All right, in three, two, one, action. And you guys, I think that is a, that's a wrap. Let's go! Let's go! Cool. Right on. All right, guys, that's a wrap. That was so fun. I love doing that. Thank you for joining me and the rest of the Aperture team. We covered grittiness. We covered high contrast. We shot with anamorphics. Man, that was so fun. I want to know what techniques you learned that you can apply to other genres in film production. Comment below, we're giving away a free B7C. One lucky winner, get down there in the comments. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Peace out. And that they'll just kind of fall off into the background and not be noticeable.